Deirdre Bosa is joined by D-Wave CEO Alan Barrett. Welcome to both of you, Deirdre. Hey, Kelly, it was Google indeed. It's Willow Chip. And just before we get to Alan, a little more context. D-Wave's market cap that stood at around $200 million for most of last year shot up to nearly $3 billion after that Willow breakthrough spurred a surge in the sector. It's now down nearly 40 percent on the session. Alan, thank you so much for joining us and making the time. Tell us what exactly Jensen Huang, the leading authority on the future of computing, is getting wrong here. So, Deirdre, thanks for the opportunity to be here. I very much appreciate it. Um, I, I think that Jensen Wong is a very smart individual, and he's built an amazing company. Uh, and he may be the authority on many aspects of computing, but certainly not all aspects of computing, and certainly not quantum computing. In this case, he's dead wrong. And the reason he's wrong is that we at D-Wave are commercial today. We have companies like MasterCard, or NTT Docomo, or Patterson Food Group, or Ford AutoSan that are using our quantum computers today in production to benefit their business operations. Not 30 years from now, not 20 years from now, not 15 years from now, but right now, today. And moreover, we have been able to solve problems on our quantum computer in the area of materials simulation in minutes that it would take well over millions of years to solve on the fastest supercomputers, which, by the way, happen to be massively parallel GPU computers. So Jensen should think a little bit about that. We are solving those problems in minutes today, and it would take millions of years to solve them on massively parallel systems that he provides. And by the way, Alan I'd be happy to meet with Jensen anytime, any place to help fill in these gaps for him. Alan, um, I got the opportunity to get to know D-Wave a little better over the last month or so, and your approach is very different than what Jensen Huang is talking about. It's limited to optimization problems, and you don't play in the same field as Jensen and NVIDIA and Google and IBM. Is that correct? No. So when you say we're limited to optimization, that's not an accurate statement. We are very good at solving optimization problems. And frankly, optimization represents most of the important hard problems that businesses need to solve. And so we're proud of the fact that our quantum computers excel in that area. But that's not the only area where we play. We play in material simulation. We play in uh, yeah, quantum uh, cryptography and cybersecurity. Uh, we play in a broad set of areas. But you are right. We have taken a different approach to quantum from everybody else in the industry, and that is what has allowed us to become commercial today. What you just described, Alan, sounds like what generative AI promises to do, optimization, simulations, et cetera. If D-Wave is offering better optimization and tools, then why aren't you valued like an AI company? Why is your revenue bookings and profitability contracting in the latest quarter? So uh, first of all, with respect to bookings and revenue, um, all, all I will say is that our business is actually growing quite nicely. And I am very much looking forward to sharing our Q4 and fiscal 24. Was there an exception then? I, I mean, Q3 revenue was down 27 percent in your as latest said, quarterly report. What happened? As I said, as I said, Deirdre, I am really looking forward to sharing our Q4 and fiscal 24 financial and operating results when we report earnings. So, you know, just stay tuned. Now, that having been said, AI and quantum are not competitive to one another. Yes, there are some areas where you might be able to use both systems. I talked about material simulation, but we are so far ahead of what uh, massively parallel GPUs can do in the material simulation area that you know, I don't even view that as competitive. When it comes to optimization, there are attempts to use GPUs to solve optimization problems. It's not necessarily their sweet spot. And that is also an area where mm -hmm. I think D-Wave's quantum computers excel. And that's why we are working with companies today to support their business operations. OK, when it and comes Alan, to just to be. Just to be really clear, though, you're saying that D-Wave does play in the same space that Jensen is talking about. I know that there's different approaches to quantum computing, annealing versus the gate model. I don't want to get into that. But you're saying that Jensen Wong has it all wrong. 
What I'm saying is that Jensen Wong does not understand what you just said, which is that there are different approaches to quantum. Annealing and gate are the two primary approaches. And while his comments may not be totally off base for gate model quantum computers, well, they are 100% off base for annealing quantum computers. And he you walked it back a little. By. From dead Sorry? wrong to not totally correct. You walked it no, back no, no, a no, little no, bit. No, no. Well, hold on, hold on. When it comes to D-Wave and annealing quantum computing, he is dead wrong. We are not 30 years out. We are not 20 years out. We are not 15 years out. We are today. We are supporting businesses today with quantum compute to solve their hard problems. So in that sense, he is dead wrong. There are approaches to quantum computing that it will take longer to mature. Okay, Alan, I think there's a lot of nuance in here, but we really appreciate you taking the time to come on and respond to those comments. Thanks very My much, pleasure. Thank you. Alan, at appreciate the time. Kelly, I had the pop back over out. to you. For that. that was very interesting. I appreciate you both. Deirdre Bosa, Alan Barrett's of D-Wave. Uh, thank you for today's Tech Check.